Praise the Lord, this is Evangelist Charles Kruger. Welcome to today's Love Born Live broadcast. We're going to have a prophetic morning and we're going to get our motives and our intentions and our expectations purified by the love of Jesus. Amen. So we are on a two-week journey into the present presence of the Holy Spirit, into the manifest presence, into the Shekinah glory, under the shadow of His wings, there where He keeps you as the apple of His eye, and into an awareness a constant awareness of the present presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We can be more sensitive. We can recognize, we can acknowledge His presence. We don't have to walk around ignoring His presence, ignorant, indifferent to the presence of Almighty God all around us. Amen. So we're going to pray for protection, especially what's going on in Senegal in South Africa. Because of the farm murders, the, the farmers has come together to protest or basically show up and just show their support and the EFF is there and they showed up where the bus loads and it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah so we're going to pray for protection for South Africa that there will not be a destabilization in this nation but we're going to look at our our expectation because we can expect good things from the Lord amen when you are born again when you're saved if I wasn't saved I would get saved <laughs> Hallelujah. Sterna Thompson, Rika Haman, bless you. Moira Brits, good morning. Lichen, Ina, Jackie, Maritza, bless you guys. Hallelujah. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast, Lord, over every comment, over every person, every profile that's on you, Lord. The rerun and the live stream, Father. O go ba jagen de lemi no mongo saka tele beg day. We plead and sprinkle and apply the blood of Jesus over every word that's going to be spoken here, Lord. And, and Lord, we come by the blood of Jesus. On the basis of the blood of Jesus, we make our petitions known with thanksgiving. Lord, knowing that it is finished, that the cross is complete, Lord, that the work has been done. And it's already paid for, Lord. And we can come in and claim the blessings with which we have already been blessed in heavenly places. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord. And as we come together today, Father... Oh, Bragaze Kete, Father, Belo Guje Kita. Just hold on. As we come together, Lord, today in prayer, I ask your Holy Spirit that you will be the one that inspires prayer, that you will influence us, that we will be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. We don't want to come in the flesh. We don't want to perform. We don't want to roar in the flesh, Lord. We want to have the Lion of Judah roar within us, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Well, the Lord said to me, and let's not beat around the bush, that South Africa is facing a series of unfortunate events that will bring us into alignment with, with seeking His face and what the Lord has planned and His purposes and His eternal destiny for this nation. It's like I see it burning. I see a nation burning. <laughs> this is a heavy, I'm not a doomsday prophet. But I see that the Lord is rising up from the ashes. There's just a few more things that need to take, be taken care of. But I see a nation rising up from the ashes and South Africa rising up and the peace and the friendliness and the wonder and the beauty and the glory of God seen in this nation where there will be a true revival of love and it will be put on display and it will be put on center stage for the whole world to see a revival nation a nation filled with the love and the peace and the joy and the glory of almighty god there is about to be an explosion of evangelism in this nation but there's a few bumps in the road so the lord says a few bumps in the road so the lord said brace yourself in my presence Get yourself in, surrounded by the angels, surrounded by my glory, hiding under the shadow of my wings. And he says that South Africa, from this day onwards, will never be the same again. Amen. And I don't think there's going to be any violence or anything like that. But God says that it's going to be a different nation. It's going to be a different, he's got, he's got different plans than what the devil has. The devil has certain plans for South Africa, but the Lord has his own plans. And his purposes will prosper because he is king of kings. And he's Lord of Lords. He is the Lord. He is the owner. He is the creator of South Africa. Amen. So praise the Lord. So Father, we pray for even the, 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 
the protests and the things that's happening in Senegal today, Lord, we ask for protection and we ask you, Lord, to unite your people, Lord, in prayer and to open our eyes and to show us, Lord, that our motives, Lord, that we will be motivated by love, that there will be no other motive, Lord, hatred, Racism is not a motive, Father. And so today, Father, I pray that there will be a dividing line, that there will be a separation. Lord, that they will, we will be clear and we will clearly see and be able to discern prophetically, Lord, the difference between, Lord, that the darkness will be darker and the light will be lighter and remove the gray areas and the neutrality, Lord. Hydratsitters. Remove that, Lord, that people will make up their minds and have resolve and commitment and know who they are and stand up for their principles, Lord. Lord, you said in your word that I would, I would that you be either hot or cold. But because you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. I'll vomit you out of my mouth. But I see that people are making, uh, there's coming a resolve, a resolve, a clear resolve, knowing what you stand for and what you're praying for and what you expect. And God says that he is about to wash and cleanse and purify our expectations and our motives and our intentions will be purified and will be driven, driven by love. It will not be driven by emotions. It will not be driven by fear. It will not be driven by selfishness and greed. But it will be driven by love. The motive behind this revival is love. The motive behind our prayers is love. The motive behind evangelism and getting a nation saved is love. And this is also what's happening all over the world. It's an absolute time of separation. And there is a coming a distinct distinction. Uh, we will be distinguished from the darkness because of the presence of the Lord. And so Moses cries out and he says in what's it, uh, Exodus 14 or 33 or 31. He says, well, we will not move unless your presence moves with, with us. And then he says, how will they be able to distinguish us? How will we be separate from the nations if your presence isn't with us? And so I will not move without your presence. Hallelujah. That's going to be the distinguishing factor. The, the factor that that separates the sheep from the goats. And it's going to be so hectic. I see that the presence of God will demand a response from the world. And you will clearly see people manifesting more and more. That the demonic, they will not even be in control of how they manifest. That the demonic will manifest clearly in the light God is bringing out. He is exposing things there's a series of unfortunate events. This is what I hear in the spirit and I see things burning. I, I see things burning and burning and burning and out of the ashes something new will rise. But this is <clears throat> something pure, something purified by fire. And what I see is that there will now these things, these, these hidden things will be brought into the light. And they will manifest and they will expose themselves without even realizing what they're doing. And they will show the whole world who they are. <laughs> and this is, this is what the Lord is busy doing. But as for us, those who are born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, you know that South Africa has got more than 80% Christians, statistically speaking. 80% of South Africans are Christians. There's a few that's, that's a bad bunch, rotten apples, <laughs> you know. But they will be exposed and things will be exposed and brought into the light and it's already happening. So we are very excited. I'm very excited. The Lord is very excited about what's happening. But brace yourself. Brace yourself. This is not business as usual. This is not just going to go on and, and it's going to be la di da di da You're going to go into the presence of the Lord. Otherwise, you might fear. You might feel like you're surrounded by fear on every side. And that your life is in jeopardy and that, that your plans and your dreams and your callings and you don't know what to do and the resources and whatever. Get in the presence of the Lord. They has provided for you. They has healed you. They is a place of peace. There is a place of clarity. There is a place of discernment in the spirit. Insight and understanding and wisdom. Hallelujah. There is a place. It's not... Uh, a cliche or a good idea or, or uh, you know just a good it's a good idea but it's more than that this is life we've got to go into the presence of the lord we can't afford 
to live our lives without the presence of the Lord. Amen. And so God can't force us to go into his presence. That's not who he is. He doesn't force people, but he invites you. And it's an urgent, urgent invitation to come into the present presence of the Holy Spirit. If you're watching this broadcast, maybe for the first time, wherever you're watching it from, I want to tell you that the Lord is yearning for you. He's longing for you. The Lord wants to draw you. He wants to, he wants to give. There's a place in Him. He has prepared a place in Him so that where He is, there you can be also. Don't mess around. But sooner or later, you're going to go out and you're going to come into the presence of the Lord. Um, it'll be better to seek him now. He says, seek my face and call upon the name of the Lord while you can, while he may hear you, because surely in the flood of great waters he will not hear you. So there is a time, there's a grace period where we, where we can call upon the name of the Lord. And he says, humble yourself before the Lord and judge yourself, lest ye be judged. Okay, so in other words, come before the Lord in humility and now is the time to seek His face. It's an urgent invitation in the presence to prepare, to be prepared by the Lord. This is what happened with Esther. Esther goes and she's selected of all the young women in the land, in the country, and she goes through about a year, a period of about a year in preparation, or a few months, I'm not sure how long, but they were put oil and frankincense and myrrh and I don't know what else, all the spices and all the preparations and the oils and the baths and the perfumes and the things that they put on Esther, Esther in the Bible, because she was to have an audience with the king, you know, Xerxes or what was his name? Anyway, <laughs> so here is, here is Esther coming and she's being prepared in the in the, and there's perfume and there's oil and, and, there's, and there's the right diets and the right protocol. She's in training. She's being prepared for an audience with a king. And this is basically what we are in. We are being drawn into the, the Lord. The Holy Spirit is now preparing you with anointing oil, with the balm of Gilead. He's healing the hurt. He's healing the pain. He's healing and binding up the broken heart. And he's taking out the strongholds of rejection and abuse and pain and suffering and torment. He's wiping the tears from your eyes. He's removing the, the issues. He's removing the high things, the vain imaginations and the high things that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. The little foxes. He's pruning the vines. He's pruning, pruning, pruning. He's preparing you for face-to-face for -face encounters with Jesus soon 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 so get don't kick against the pricks don't go against what the Holy Spirit wants to do South Africa this is a time to seek the face of the Lord <laughs> this is the greatest privilege and the greatest honor but nobody can force you and if if you feel like you're gonna force yourself into the presence of the Lord you gotta know <clears throat> we've got to expect good things from God you gotta know that you cannot put tension on your relationship with the Lord. That's why it says, call upon the name of the Lord while he may be found. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. That's in the word. Listen, call upon the name of the Lord. So while he may be found, then you don't have, to, there's no, nobody forcing you. And you don't do it out of necessity. I mean, you can just look at the news. You can just look all around you, what's happening. Or you can just listen to people. There's, there's like a shaking, there's like turmoil, there's like birth pangs going on. Things are, there's, there's tension, there's, there's pressure, there's things happening in the nations. And I was shocked. I was shocked last night. You, you, okay, well, to see all things that's happening, you don't have to be very spiritually discerning to know that this is a good time to start seeking the face of the Lord and praying in tongues, worshiping Jesus, making times of fellowship making time for the Lord, redeeming the time because the days are evil, watching and praying. This is, this, is, this is a time to do it. The floods of great waters, don't wait until you're homeless and on the street. Don't wait until everybody's sick and dying. Don't wait until there's wars and don't wait until you are just right now. 
get in the presence let your motives be pure let your motive be love and that's the reason you go into the presence it's not to put tension on your relationship with the Lord and force yourself because that's a dangerous thing because then your relationship with the Lord becomes awkward you don't want to have an awkward relationship because intimacy with a stranger kills you on the inside you got to get to know Jesus <clears throat> get to know the Lord and be drawn by the Holy Spirit and respond and be obedient to the drawing and the wooing and the calling of the Holy Spirit to draw near to Him. Every time you put on a sermon, every time you look at somebody on, the in, on, the, on Facebook, or wherever, there's a drawing, there's an invitation for you to go into the presence, the presence, the presence. You've got to answer it now, willingly. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. And confess that he is Lord. Now, it will happen. But you have an opportunity right now to willingly come and to give over and to respond to his invitation. He's not forcing you. He's not making you do anything. He's after your heart. He wants you to make a decision. So the motive with which you serve the Lord, there must be no ulterior motives or hidden agendas. Because those hidden agendas is coming out into the light. There's a few bumps in the road. You're going to need the Holy Spirit. You, you know, fly. Don't, don't run on the road. Fly. Mount up on eagle's wings. Fly above the bumps. There's a few bumps on the road. And I see a series of unfortunate events. So we're coming into. And there will be an exposing of, of these things. And you know what? They're not even going to know how. How it's happening. Yeah, Obi. They're not even going to know that they are manifesting and they're exposing themselves. And it's like these demonic forces are going to be so obvious in their words, in their expressions. Yeah, Obi. In, in the way they, I mean, you can just turn on the television, see how they are going on. They're going on like they're demon possessed. They don't even realize that the world is watching and looking and seeing exactly what is in their heart because what the heart is full of the mouth of they're not going to be able to lie they're not going to be able to keep it a secret anymore they're going to be very open and plain and they will just show the world who they are that's what the lord is causing them to do they will be snared by the words of their own mouth they have dug a pit and they will fall into the pit that they have dug for you They'll come in one way and they will scatter seven different directions. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against him. All right? There is the protection. There is the hedge of protection. There is the arms of Jesus. There is the shadow of his wings. There is the, him keeping you as the apple of his eye. There is protection. And you, and as for us, we will serve the Lord. We just be still and know that he is God. And only with our eyes will we behold and see the reward of the wicked. But the heads are going to roll. <laughs> They're going to be exposed. There's going to come out things. Okay, but anyway, so I was watching. And be in the beginning of this year, there was a prophecy that the Lord gave me. He said 2020. And I didn't really fully understand. He said 2020 will be the calm before the storm. The calm before the storm. So I didn't know what that was, but we prophesied it and look, that was the calm. 2021 storms, the storm of God's glory is about to hit the earth. And if you're not part of the kingdom of light, you're not going to be able to handle the storm of glory. And that storm of glory, that deluge of the light and the rivers of living water and the rain of heaven and the Holy Spirit being poured out in such a way that deluge of the glory and the presence and the miracles and the signs and the wonders and the, the evangelism and the souls coming in, it will demand a response or a reaction from the world. We've been reacting because of what Satan has been doing, but he's been playing, overplaying his hands. In other words, the word, the Lord, the word of the Lord says that there will be the exposing of light. There will be a release and an explosion of the light of God that will now cause the, the sinners to, it will demand a response from them and they will be exposed and they will manifest 
and all their masks are falling off of them. It's going to be clear to the whole world who they are. They will show because the word says by the fruit will a tree be known. And you know what? What the heart is full of, the mouth overflows and speaks of. And people, the masks and the veils and the hidden things and the hiding is coming out. And, and it's, it's a time where that is, and they're going to come out and they're going to be exposed for who and what they really are. At the same time, there will be an exposing of the remnant that has been hidden in caves, the Josephs that has been in prisons that has been hidden in prisons for a long, long, long time. Long time. You felt forsaken. You felt like God's forgotten about you. You felt, well, there's no... God says that he is, there is a great reveal that is busy taking place in the face of the earth. The sinners will be revealed for who they are. I mean, these wicked, wicked people, these demonic principalities operating in and through people will be exposed you will see you'll be shocked it's like the world will be shocked to hear what these politicians and what these people even people around you even friends friends family they will expo bring and expose themselves for who they really are and without apology it will be just absolutely as plain as day who they are but at the same time now, the sons of God is arising and there will be a revealing of the sons and the daughters of God where they will not try to act or do or perform like they should, but it will be a natural flow and they will not be able to help themselves. <laughs> it will be a natural outflow of the overflow of the present presence of the holy spirit signs wonders and miracles will follow them everywhere they go it's not going to be hard work it's not going to be difficult it's not going to be effort but it will be because of the relationship and intimacy with the living god hallelujah so this is busy happening and we're going to see it more and more and more many things will clash and many things will try and and they will turn on themselves and i see also a dividing of their, their, their ranks and they will turn on themselves and devour themselves and this is by the hand of the Lord because he says the battle is mine you stand still and behold and we worship and we praise and we Judah goes before us and we're going to worship and praise and go, go nearer to the Lord and love people and I see that at the end of the day that as these eruptions take place that people's hearts will grow soft and people's hearts will start yearning for peace and people's hearts will look for an answer and a solution. And that's where the gospel will be very evidently portrayed, Christ and Him crucified. And where the preaching of the cross and the crucified Christ will be on center stage again and the blood of Jesus will be preached again. And I see that many, many people will come to the Lord. But first, the great reveal. First, the great exposing is coming. I mean, and so there's a few bumps in the road and so on, but it's not going to affect you when you brace yourself in the present presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's pray. Shebra, Gaza, Kata. Oh yeah, this is what I wanted to say. Thank you, Lord. So I prophesied about the calm before the storm. 2020. I saw a video that President Trump did three years ago. Three years ago. It was a very interesting video. I just saw it for the first time. I saw him three years ago. To go and check it out. <laughs> Ooh, it's heavy. Uh, just search the, the cal Calm Before the Storm Trump. Go and check it out if you want to do it on YouTube. And check out Calm Before the Storm Trump. And see what he said. He had a panel of all the highest ranking military people in the world <laughs> coming together. Well, in the world, I don't know where. Coming together and he said, well, he said to the, it scared and it shocked America. I didn't, he said, well, this is the calm before the storm. And then they asked him, what storm? What are you talking about? He says, you'll see. <laughs> and he was talking about the calm before the storm. I didn't know about it. And the Lord said, this year is the calm before the storm. So 2021 is going to be very interesting. And, is, and, and from the, but we have time. We have time 
to prepare and I'm not talking about gathering food and all that kind of stuff that's also one way of preparing but I'm not talking about that and there's a preparation in the spirit realm that we have to prepare ourselves or allow the Holy Spirit to prepare us so allow yourself to be drawn consent is everything it's everything now show up when the Lord prompts you to pray show up Go by his leading. Sometimes there's music, sometimes there's not. There's all kinds of things that help you, but be led by the Spirit and don't feel like you've now got to perform before the end of the year and get things. You've got to now go into the rest of the Lord towards the end of the year. You've got to rest in the Lord and that is how you reinforce yourself. In, in other words, bracing yourself. In the presence of the Lord. It's not fighting. It's not performing. It's not putting tension on your relationship. It's not screaming and shouting. And It is being in the flow of the Spirit. Led by the Spirit. But being willing and obedient. When He prompts you to pray. When He prompts you to fast. And when He leads you into a fast. And I think we're going to go into fasting. But it's not going to be like a hunger strike. It's going to be more of the Holy Spirit. Is unctioning you. And prompting you by a still small voice to fast very easy not now you must you must you must you must no there's there's he gently woos you and invites you don't be stubborn don't kick against the pricks don't be stubborn don't be like the horse and the mule that will not come near unless you put a bridle in their mouth and force them don't be like that don't be like that. Come now. And there's a reason that you are listening to this. Thank you, Jesus. And there's a storm of God's glory that's coming. But let me tell you, if you're not saved, the glory will, they will run and say, let the mountains fall on us. There will be such a conviction coming on sinners and they will manifest and they'll do things that they will feel like they're not in control of what they are doing. The demons will take over their bodies. They'll just take them over. You'll see more demon possession and manifestation of demons clearer than ever before, than we've ever seen it in this time. All right, so there's an exposing coming. And you will also see more clearer than ever before the revealing of the sons of God. And the presence of God will be strong and the presence of God will be intense and it will demand a response. You'll walk and and when you when you come near to these things there will be a manifestation don't be surprised when people start fighting with you and and just manifesting and just the demons are just coming out um and and they just because of your, the presence of the lord that you're walking in this is it demands a response and i've seen it where i have seen some stuff where I've sought the Lord for a period and then you go into town and I mean I'm I was in in town one day after this and I saw a man walking <laughs> and I I freaked out I saw a man walking and he looked at me and his face turned into a demon, demon's face like a baboon it looked like a baboon's face but even worse I've never seen a face like that ever in my life his physical face turned into that. Like you forget about your horror movies. This was a real man. And he looked at me in my face. He looked at me and he walked and he walked and he kept on looking at me. How he didn't bump into anybody, I don't know. He actually turned his head like this and he's walking and he's looking me straight in the eye. And he's just walking, walking, walking. It looked like, I f look man, that was, that was nasty. I... Uh, I had people that manifest that actually they antagonistic they it's like they absolutely hate you and you don't even know them it's like they they reacting against the presence of God it's not you it's not you it's Jesus it's the presence that you carry it's the glory that you carry now we will see this more than ever before today in Sienaco in South Africa there's people gathering and there's all kinds of groups and everybody's got their opinion about it but 
what is busy happening is there is now an exposing taking place. There's now a, a dividing line taking place. There is the and and forces are gathering and and so these things are being exposed and it has to be dealt with because God wants to bring a revival and there are still some root issues that needs to be pulled up and needs to be dealt with all right so we invite the fire of God we invite the purifying fire of God upon South Africa father the all consuming unconditional love of God the zeal of God that consumes us Father, let your fire fall. Let your glory, let the wood, hay, and the stubble be burnt up. Let the gold come forth purified by the fire. Let there be the fire of God in Jesus' name. Because we desire holiness. We desire purity, Lord. We desire your presence. We desire to see many, many, many souls saved. Because this is the day of the harvest. It's not long. It's not four months to the harvest. This is the day. Look up and see that the fields are ripe and ready for the harvest in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. And so we're going to see that people's motives will be evidently portrayed. People's motives will come out into the light. But there is also a remnant that will rise up in South Africa that is standing for justice and truth and righteousness. And the closer they come to Jesus and the more they pray and seek the face of the Lord, the more the demonic will manifest because the, demo the, the anointing demands a reaction. Or a, there's no more neutrality. There's no more sitting on the fence. There's no more gray areas that you're going to either be for God or against it, the, the kingdom of light. You're either for him or against. So there's the presence of the Lord that is busy manifesting. So that's why the Lord is saying, brace yourself. But please do brace yourself. Please do brace yourself. This is, this. listen, 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 listen. It's not business as usual. It's not going to work. You, you can't just go on in a, in a normal, like you always serve the Lord. You, you, the Lord is drawing you closer and nearer. Listen to his prophets. Listen to his invitation. Listen. Make time for the Lord you've got to come closer and don't put tension on your relationship show up and let him win your heart you're going to need it don't wait until the floods of many waters um, or don't wait until you now want to decide oh Lord you know you want to show up and now you want to build a relationship with the Lord but it's emergency and it's crisis upon crisis upon crisis and it's shaking and it's now you want to build intimacy with the Lord difficult difficult now when there's the calm before the storm now when there's peace now when there is a time a sealer moment now is the time to develop your relationship with the Lord and come closer to the Lord I'm telling you <laughs> I'm not a doomsday prophet. I am prophesying revival. But it depends on what side of the camp you're on. It's revival and glory and blessing and goodness and wealth transfers and supernatural divine health. Age reversal. I mean glory like you've never known. Never seen it before. But if it's going... If if they, you, you tend to the carnal side, guys, now it's the time. It's the time now. To come close to the Lord. If you weren't saved, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. Now. <laughs> yeah, amen. Wow, 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 wow. It's going to be very interesting. Because the Lord, the Lord is, is dancing over you with singing. And he is, his expectation. Hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. The scepter of the wicked will not rule upon the lot appointed to the righteous unless the righteous will find it in his heart to do evil. That's the word of the Lord. There is an expectancy and an expectation in the heart of the Son, Jesus. He's got an expectation and his hope will not be deferred. And so there's the expectation because love has been awoken. Song of Songs says, please don't awaken my beloved until he pleases. 
Love has been awoken. It's time. It's time. Hallelujah. Come to Him. Give Him consent to win your heart. You have the power of consent. That's basically what you have. But there is the, 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 the Lord said, it's a series of unfortunate events. Like the movie. I don't know. I haven't watched the movie. But I, a series of unfortunate events that basically it's going to be ring exposure in South Africa and the United States is going to happen all over the world. And I think and I feel in my heart there is a connection between South Africa and the United States. Somehow we have totally different worlds. It's a different world in South Africa than in the United States. Different world, different. But there's an arcing taking place. There's a transferring of a baton. The baton is being transferred from the United States to South Africa and Africa. There is an importation taking place. And there's a battle in the spirit realm over Africa. There's a battle because Africa is ready for revival. I'm telling you the people here in Africa is ready for a revival and a harvest. We've seen the harvest already coming in, in Africa. People in Africa are ready. But there's a fight. Communism is fighting for territory. The demons behind it. It's fighting. It's buying up Africa. It's fighting because there's cheap labor here. And, they, and they're coming under the guise. People, people, people. God has a plan for Africa. There's an anointing coming upon Africa. And out of Africa will go revivalists. And they will walk in great power. And things are going to happen. Look at what happened in Europe. Europe with all these missionaries and there were such great moves of God in Europe. You go there now, if you preach on the street, they arrest you and deport you or the, <laughs> if you're from another country. Otherwise, they just arrest you. They, in Europe, you, you're arrested when you preach the gospel in public. That's very interesting that we're a Christian nation what revivals in Africa you can walk everywhere anywhere you can preach the gospel and people will listen there's these Muslim areas as well but they it's very dangerous to preach there if God's not with you uh, but they they are trying to come into Africa the northern parts of Africa they're trying to infiltrate and come down to South Africa is a key nation. We got to pray for South Africa. But things has got to come to a point now. Things can't linger. Can't hang around like this. God said this was the, the calm before the storm. And things are going to be drawn to a close. There's going to come closure. For a lot of things are going to happen fast. Going to happen fast. But we got to get ourselves braced up in the presence of the Lord. In the rest of the Lord. Walk in the presence of the Lord. Stay with Him. And don't walk around with condemnation trying to be holy in your own strength. Come just as you are. Come as you are. His grace is sufficient. And His blood is worthy. And His grace is greater than your failures. And He is greater than your heart if your heart condemns you. Come, He says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as wool. Come just as you are. And the Lord will bring about the change. He says, it's God that works in us both to do and to will according to His good pleasure. He is the one that wins your heart, but you've got to just show up. Show up and allow him to win your heart. And this will purify your motives and your intentions. And it will purify your expectation. There's an expectation. Cattle cross this nation. There is a revival. I've seen it. I've tasted it. I have seen services. I haven't seen it anywhere else in the world. I've never seen it on television. I've never seen it anywhere. I've seen, I've experienced services, revival services, revivals on the streets of South Africa, people getting born again in public, calling on the name of the Lord in tears of joy. I mean, we've seen it and it was a glimpse of things to come. It's going to break open. It's going to break open, but we cannot sustain that without the presence of the Lord, without intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And you talk about intimate fellowship. It's not, it's interesting. It's adventure. It's wild. It's not this 
la, la di da this, this, this little, <laughs> what, what do you call it? It's time for the men of God to come in. It's time for men to come in. When you talk about intimacy and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, they, it's like, what? I'm not, you know. No, you, you got to know that there's adventures in God. There's fire. There's zeal. You'll run out in front of horses, man. There's, there's the unctions of the Spirit. There's deep things. There's awesome things. There's power. There's signs, wonders, and miracles. There's a shaking. It demands a response. You walk in the presence of the Lord. It demands a response. There's never a dull moment. Demons manifest. There's a response. And this is what we can see now. We see a nation calling upon the name of the Lord. Now we see how demon, demonized and de demonic political parties are manifesting. You look at them and they don't even realize what they're saying. They are absolutely just manifesting Satan. Uh, but we, we drawing closer to the Lord. Amen. The righteous, the righteous are drawing closer to the Lord all over the earth. But we can now see, look at the United States, what's happening. I mean, look at how some of those guys are going on. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a politician and I don't want to get involved in politics. But let me tell you, no, politic, no political party will, will save the world and help the world. Jesus Christ is the one that saves the world. But he's got his people in place. And he puts, and the Lord brings honor and he brings promotion. And he makes things beautiful in his time. And so there are people that sit in place. By God, by the hand of God. And at the same time, you see how the opposites are reacting and how they are being exposed. And heads will roll and things are going to come into the light. People will be brought to justice. Righteousness will rule and they, they will expose themselves. They will make stupid mistakes. And all these things are going to come into the light. It will surface, it will surface, it will surface. I see like the oceans that's roaring, roaring, roaring like uh, living waters. And then the Lord said the calm before the storm and suddenly there's a calm on the ocean. Have you ever seen the ocean very tumultuous or what do you call it? The ocean, just the waves and it's a very tempest, uh, uh, uns unsettled, you know, uh, violent ocean. And then when there's a storm coming, then suddenly the waves, it's like the ocean has no waves. It, it goes totally quiet and calm. And what happens is all the shaking up of the waves, all the stuff, when there's a calm, it all rises to the surface. This is what I see in the spirit. It all rises to the surface. And when you look at it, a calm before the storm, when you look at the ocean, there's a thick layer of foam and gunk and uh, and filth and things that's been brought up it all surfaces to the top because this of the calm the calmness make gives this this rubbish time to surface and it comes to the surface and this is what's happening now it's been it's been rough but now you'll see things surfacing 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 and being exposed amen in Jesus name and it's happening uh, already everywhere so father we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives and over our expectations father we thank you for your prophetic insight and your prophetic word Lord Lord we receive and we accept your invitation come into your presence Lord I'm I feel in my spirit I'm so tired of being led by emotions you know or being influenced by emotions and being in this cycle up one day down the next up one day down the next cycles of humanity uh, and fallen grace cycles of of the soul I see that there's coming a maturity in the body of Christ and I see that people will be steadfast and committed and faithful. And they will come just as they are. And they will come with their piercings and their tattoos. And they will come with their mohawks. And they will come with all kinds of funny and their clothes. And, their, and the smell of the world will still be on them. And they will come and the Lord will heal them. And they will He will raise them up. And even those prodigals that's coming back now. They will walk in the manifested 
sonship that God has promised. Because he said in his word that even those who come at the last hour, they will receive the same reward as the people that bore the heat of the day and worked the whole day. Even the ones that's coming in the last hour, they will also walk in the sonship. God will do an acceleration. The years that's been stolen will be restored in Jesus' mighty name. You've been called. You, you knew about the, the urgent invitation for the Lord to go into the presence and you feel like you've wasted your years and you haven't. But the, the, the reason you're watching this and ministries like this is that the Lord is now restoring the years. In other words, if you just go in and start now, He's wiping your slate clean. And you start now and you go into the presence of the Lord. You will go right into manifested sonship. Because an acceleration is taking place in the spirit. And I feel, I feel a grievance in my spirit because and a, a weariness of being led by emotions and looking at propaganda. There is coming a maturity in the body of Christ that when, when you seek the face of the Lord, there will come peace, a cool, calm and collected assurance and a boldness and a confidence. As you rise up in maturity... And you're not going to be shaken anymore. You're not going to be like a reed in the wind anymore. You're not going to be like the waves tossed with tempest of the sea anymore. You will be comforted. There's coming a security and a stability in the presence of the Lord upon your life that you've been yearning for. You say to the Lord, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this thing and around the mountain and again and again and again and Satan is doing the same things and he's and it's there's got to be a closure. There's got things has got to come to a point. And this is the expectation in the heart of Jesus because hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. And I see Jesus is expectant for things to come to a closure now and come to a point and, and for the gray areas and the neutrality. To be taken out and, and for the lukewarm to be vomited out so that there will be a distinguishing, that there will be a separation between the sheep and the goat, that there will be a distinguishing factor of the presence of God and the fire of God and uh, those who are totally, uh, it, they will come light and darkness. Darkness will get darker, light will get brighter. Amen. So there's coming a clarity. A, a prophetic insight and a discernment uh, in the nations and in your life. So um, there are people that's going to leave your ministry. There's people that's going to leave your business, leave your, I'm talking about families that's going to be separated like this. Families. Where people refuse to receive the Lord Jesus, there will be, there will be families that, that you will not even be able to, to talk with them as they manifest, as the demons manifest through them. It will be clear to everybody um, what side you are on. But there's not going to be one foot there and one foot here. You don't have the luxury of doing that anymore. You will circumstance, the fire will bring out what fruit is in you. It will now be fruit season. We'll now see who you are. We'll see. The world will see. And you might not even know how, and you'll be wise in your own eyes, and you think you're right. You think you're producing sweet water, while actually the sweet water is bitter water. If the light in your eyes is dark, how great is that darkness? When you think, and he says that in his light, we will see the light. If you, if the light in your eyes is dark, how great is that darkness? Because the eyes are the light, you know. It's the windows of the soul. <laughs> so when you see and you think you are right, but you're actually producing bitter water, but you think it's sweet water, You'll fight and you'll even give your life 
for what you believe and you think you're right, but you're so wrong. You're totally wrong because you refuse to go into the presence of the Lord. There will be Christians. There will be people who call themselves Christians for a long time that will be so wrong and so evil that they will think they're doing God's work. Like in the days of the Pharisees where they crucified Jesus. Like in the days of Paul the Apostle when he thought he was doing God's work. He says, I am the chiefest of sinners because he thought he was doing God's work. The water he thought was coming out of him was sweet. He thought it was sweet, but it was actually bitter water. And the light in his eyes was dark. And how great is that darkness? Because he thought he was, and this is how it's going to be again, that people will think they will do the work of God. And they will actually be doing the work of Satan. Because they do not go into the presence. They don't make time for the presence of God. They want to do business as usual. They want to continue with their church programs and their things and their little things. It's not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. The pressure and the fire and the heat being turned up. And you will either thrive in the presence of the Lord. Or the heat will bring out and expose what is actually in your heart. And you will... We will see persecution of Christians and the persecution will come from people in the church. I mean, physical persecution where they beat you and they want to kill you. This is how it's going to be because it's a demonic. They will be exposed. The demons that thought they're going to hide and they're going to be undercover and wolves in sheep's clothing. The, the sheep's clothing is being removed the fake, the wood, the hay and the stubble, the fig leaves. I curse the fig leaves in Jesus' name. The fake things that you've covered yourself up with is being exposed and your intentions will be made known and clear, clear to the world. And we're going to see it more and more and more and more. And now today, today is a day like that. And this is a day. Amen. Bless you. Love you. Love you. Shiba Raba Gaza Kata Labangu Doro Boso Koto. Okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just want to anoint you with the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the balm of Gilead, and the oil of joy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Rebe Gadoguta Kala Banga de Sotaraba Saka Talaba. I anoint you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth to be braced in the presence of the Lord. Braced up to be strengthened, to be reinforced for the Lord to raise up the defenses for you to rest in the finished work of the cross and to walk in absolute power by the endowment of power from on high. To walk under the unction and the promptings and the influence of the Holy Spirit. So that your words will not fall to the ground. But that there will be power in your words. And that demons will be cast out. We'll see more demons cast out in the days ahead than we've ever seen. We, we, than we've seen in the last 2000 years combined. We'll see demons cast out on a daily basis in the streets in the shopping centers, on stage, on, on camera, on news. We'll see, it will be a, a normal occurrence where you will see demons cast out of people and how the demons will manifest and scream loudly as the Christians come and they cast out the demons. You'll see, and people will say, the, the world will say, no, it's it's some kind of a psychological problem and they're not going to be able to explain it because they will not admit that it's demonic and it's spiritual. They will say it's, it's something else. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see. You'll see demons being cast out. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So anoint us, Lord. Anoint us. Keep us safe, Lord, in the presence of the Lord. We're going to be not fearful at all. No fear. There's no, absolutely no fear. In this love but those whose motives isn't love will be exposed and so be ready to answer them and tell them who Jesus is and lead them to Jesus because they're gonna ask 
uh, we're going to have people asking us. In the past, we went out into the streets and the highways and the byways telling people about Jesus. Now, we've reached the tipping point. And now, people will come to you and they will come to the brightness of your rising. And people will stop you in the street and, tell, and ask you, how can I be saved? They will be drawn to you. You're not going to be even, oh my Lord. You're going to be at the right place at the right time. You're not even going to, oh, sorry. You, you're not even going to go out and look for souls to win for Christ like we did in the past. Wherever you walk, we've reached the tipping point. Now people will follow you and you will see crowds following you in the streets like in the days of Acts. In the days of the apostles in the early church, where and in the days of Jesus, where the throng and the press of the crowd was all around him, you'll walk and people will will throng you because they see the glory of God and they'll ask, "This is where you're going to walk in the streets." They will come and you will have a crowd of people coming to see, crying out, "Please, heal, touch me, heal me." This is what we saw in the early days um, when Paul and Barnabas goes into a city, the whole city comes out to see them because of the signs, the wonders and the miracles. The city comes out, the whole, cr the crowds, I mean, no TV, no radio, no banners, no posters, no flyers, no billboards, no nothing. The presence of the Lord demands a response and the word says they turn the whole world upside down. The gospel. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> so into the gospel, so into this prophetic word. Amen. Bless you. This is your opportunity to sow into evangelism. There's the banking details of the ministry. Yes, PayPal. Thank you, Lord. It's going to be awesome, man. Hallelujah. What a word, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Get your communion elements ready. We're going to partake in communion. And thank you, Father, for this word, Lord, and purify our expectations so that we will see, Lord, the revival is coming. Ah, oh, it's going to be awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Get in the presence. Take the, take the invitation now. And receive it. It's awesome. And don't put pressure. Don't make it awkward. Just show up and give him consent to win your heart. That's all. Just put on a sermon. Pray in tongues. Um... Read the chapter in the Bible. Read. Um, get in the presence. So towards the Spirit. Get yourself in a position where He can inspire faith. Where He can win your heart. Uh, talk to Him from your heart. Not from your head. Not from a little page. Talk to Him from your heart. Talk to Him. He's your Father. He's your, he's your friend. He's your lover of your soul. He's your Savior. He's your Master. He's your God. He's your King. Amen. Talk to Him. Amen. Father, we receive the body of the Lord Jesus and the blood of the Lamb of God that was shed for us today. Humbly and thankfully, we receive, Lord. Amen. Hmm. Glory.
peace to you, protection, no fear, no nothing. Be inspired to praise the Lord, to worship Jesus. You're going to make it. You're not going to fail. You're not going to wonder and fear where you're going to get food, where you're going to stay, where you're going to sleep. No, you will prosper. You will sow in the midst of famine and see a hundredfold return. You will be blessed. You'll be protected. You'll walk in the glory. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for you. You're going to be the head and not the tail. You're going to be the knowledge of the glory of God is going to fill the earth. Enjoy. But don't expect the world to be happy about it. <laughs> They're going to hate. They're going to hate. Overcome with jealousy and envy. They're going to call you arrogant. And they're going to call, they're going to make false witness against you. They're going to persecute you because of the word. They're going to persecute you. Because they're going to try and, and but the Lord will, f will bring their plans to nothing. They will walk themselves into a wall of fire. And they will have to bow their knees under the conviction of the Holy Spirit and say, you are the blessed, you are blessed of the Lord. How can we be saved? That's how it's going to happen. Amen. Amen. And I love you. And I'll see you tonight at six. Thank you. Glory.